tuning in to watch the business to customer cart abandonment demo. Today we are going to show you how to deploy the Discover and demo packs from Sophie and then we'll walk through the demo and that's really about showing how a non-technical e-commerce manager can use Discover dashboards to identify issues on the site and prioritize which ones might be addressed first, which ones are more serious, that sort of thing. We'll also walk through how to leverage search or drill down, it's really the same or similar functionality to find problematic user sessions and then finally we'll walk through a couple of session replays to visualize and understand what's happening there. Okay, let's get started. Let's uh, pop over and walk through how to spin this guy up in Sophie. I'll log in. You can see my account set up here. It's already set up to remember me. All righty, let's pop into the catalog. That's starting to uh, fill out down here, but we can go ahead and enter our search term. In this case, it's discover. Now there's only a couple of search, or excuse me, discover items in here currently, so this will be a pretty quick search. So we'll give this a second to get started here, and you can see over here the status is already going to in progress. Uh, as this thing gets going, you're going to see it provide us a sandbox ID. It'll take a little time. But the um, situation we're in now is we need to wait roughly an hour currently for this demo pack to build itself. It's actually going to install the product uh, in one shot and then apply all this demo data for ourselves, and then we'll come back here. So. We'll be back in just a few minutes, or actually more like an hour, and what we're going to do at that time is this button's going to go green, and we're going to click on that guy to get into the solution console. We're back. You can see that my status is now showing as deployed. I've got a nice uh, sandbox ID here. And now I can pop into the solution console for Sophie. Again, there's just been a couple of clicks, and I've got my own... Um, my own entire Discover environment spun up and with demo data too. Let's pop over here and we'll talk about this real briefly and then we'll jump into the demo. Okay, so our solution console dashboard's popping up here. Give it just a second to create. Okay, and you can see a couple of key things here. You can tell the pods have all started. This time we're all green means all of our pods have restarted. There's all kinds of information here about the Sophie uh, process and how it spun things up. But what we really need is this stuff right here. You can see HCL unit could discover general information. This is the key component for us. Let's pop into here. You can see a couple of things here that are going to look pretty familiar. you got the address for the DNCA. You've got the packet forwarder setup itself. These are really about how data is delivered to Discover. And then you've got access to the Discover portal, which we're going to use in just a second. So let's take a second here, though, and call out the fact that this is a full-on running Discover environment. And so though I've loaded this demo data, we're going to walk through it. It's, it's a relatively straightforward use case. You are always welcome to add on to that. This is a full functioning Discover environment, and you can use it to customize, show the user something else above and beyond whatever we're going to talk about here for sure. But without further ado, let's click on the open link and get to the portal here. So we're going to jump right over to dashboards today, pop into the overview, and you're going to see a bunch of examples of the kind of data Discover might collect. There's information in here about how many sessions, about how the browser breakdown works, about what kind of traffic it is. You can see information here about refer, although there's only been one in this particular case. Uh, you can see about device models. Anything you can think of could be in here. We're going to go ahead and fast forward over to the struggle tab. And you're going to see there's a couple of different charts in here, right? We're going to come back down to this guy in just a minute. But let's start here with this failed search terms. And, and the reason why is just that failed search terms is a great kind of low-hanging fruit for discovered almost every uh, customer that might buy it, because almost everyone has a search on their site. Um, always important to know why or what searches your users might be executing and not finding what they want because maybe they're misspelling something commonly and not finding an item they want to, and that's going to impact how many purchase. Or, or maybe even uh, you've got a misspelling in your database and they're spelling it correctly and not finding it. Either way, let's drill in here and look at just a couple of capabilities of reports. These reports, excuse me. And we'll just stay in here just a, a second there and we'll get on to the main event. So if we look at this guy, you can see a nice report of all the different things people have searched for in here. I'm actually going to filter this down and make it a little bit easier to read. I'm going to look at the top three failed search terms for today. So let me see, change that here because now I've got it to the top three. And I'm going to go ahead and modify this too. So it's just today. Let's just look at a little simpler data set instead of the last week. And what I find out here is that the three most common failed search terms today are a misspelling of the word blouse, uh, a misspelling of the word wolverine, and the word pizza. Now, the Aurora store doesn't sell pizza, so that's an interesting take there, but maybe we should, right? Maybe we can add a, an item in there that would come up in the pizza search, whether it's a magnet, whatever it might be. But you can say this is, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see this is incredibly useful information about the kind of experience your customers are having. So let's bounce back out 
back to our overview dashboard. I'm going to go right back to our struggle tab. Let me see. Struggle. Here we go. We're going to drop down into this guy. Payment page, three plus visits in a single session. What this means is that in this particular session, people hit the payment page three different times. That's, of course, not normal. And an average checkout, a person would hit that payment page one time. So it's indicative of struggle of some kind. People are attempting to get somewhere, getting stuck in a little bit of a loop. Let's drill in a little bit further, see if we can find out what's going on. So I'm going to get into the details of the report here. And what we're going to see is that data broken down by day. You can see over the last week here, you can see the same numbers are here. I'm not super worried about the few earlier in the week. I'm going to drill into the problem today. I'm going to clear spike today. Let's drill into that guy. So what this is going to do is going to pop up the session list. Okay, These session lists are actually, you get to these in a number of ways. In this particular case, we drilled in from a report. Uh, this is all the sessions that satisfied that report for that given day. You can also end up in this screen by executing a search. Now, the cool thing about searches is, is you can search for events, which is, again, patterns of behavior in the data. You can also, also excuse me, just search for text strings, uh, the fact that somebody saw a given error message. It's a little slower in that scenario because the data is not indexed, but super valuable. Now, this screen is very, very valuable in its own right because it's highly customizable. You can see some events here. For example, you can put icons in for any event that you might have, uh, not limited to the ones you can see here, just for any example. You also can modify these uh, headings here and add, capture this data. So, for example, you might capture which browser a user came in with or where they came from geographically or what their language code was or what kind of customer they were. Right? Sometimes there's business customers, maybe there's different retail customers. Any kind of information you can gather from the session can be placed here, and that can be super useful. Sometimes you're looking at a problem and you can tell by looking at a session list like this without even replaying something that it's a subset of the population that's having the issue. Of course, we're not going to do that guy today. We're going to drill and replay one of these sessions, see if we can figure out why they're having this issue where they're hitting the payment page multiple times. So let's pop into replay here. So give this guy a second to load. And you can see here, now I have the option of walking through an entire session. And I can do that guy here. Right? I can pop through and walk through an entire session if I want to, see where people are clicking. There, for example, electronics. And then under electronics, I click tablets. But I'm familiar with this site. And of course, that can be incredibly time consuming. So I'm going to bounce down here to the shipping billing view and see if I can figure out what's going on. Okay, I don't have to watch the whole session. I know what I care about. So let's drill down here. Let me see here. I can walk. User's going to pick Amex, American Express card. And there's just a click on the screen. Let me see. Enter our uh, credit card number. There's a credit card number. Uh, for what it's worth, you can privacy that out if you like. It depends on where you're storing your data. In this particular case, it's not privacy, but the product has the capability to uh, obscure any data you might want to. Uh, for security reasons. Now, the next click is going to be, of course, the CVV. You can see that here. Nice. There's a CVV being highlighted. And then I can see that the next thing is the next click. There's my next click is going to be highlighted down here. There it is. And I can tell immediately that there's going to be a problem here because I can see the ID, clickable error message. Right? Let's go ahead and click on that guy and see what the problem is. Okay, so it looks like in this particular case, like the credit card number is invalid, right? It looks like there's a problem with our credit card processing, and it's telling us that even valid credit card numbers aren't good. Now, if I fast forward a little bit, I suspect I'm going to see the exact same thing again here. In fact, I can skip over. Look, there's another credit card name entered, and here's the same messaging. Let me see if it's the same error. And it is, right? And it won't surprise me if we see it a third time. Okay, yeah, three different times here, folks having trouble entering their credit cards. And then, of course, they abandon. That's where the session ends. Well, that's anecdotal, right? We walked through and replayed one session. So we'll come back to that in just a minute. But initially, what we're going to do is bounce out of here and replay another session just to give ourselves a little bit more of a stronger case that that might be our issue. So let's see if we have the same issue in this additional session here. So I can see this guy's loading here. And I don't need to watch the whole session again, as we discussed. I'm going to bounce down to, yep, order ship shipping billing view. Let's pop. Yeah, and I can tell already this is going to be a very similar problem, at least. Maybe not the same. Let's look and see what the error messages are. Yeah, that's going to be the exact same error. Credit card number is not valid here. So now that we're back to our session list, let's look at another session just to kind of confirm for us what we think our issue might be. While this guy's loading, 
we'll know that we're probably going to be able to skip ahead. We don't need to replay the whole session. So let's give this guy a second to load. And we'll pop down and see if we're having the same problem here. Here we go. Okay, let's bounce down to the end here. And I can tell from the uh, IDs that I'm clicking on here that the errors are going to be similar. Let's look and see if they're the same, and they are. Okay. Uh, credit card number is not valid. Again, we're having that same credit card processing, and I suspect I'm going to see it multiple times again just because the page itself is loading. Indeed, we are. Look at that. Okay, so there's two, and here's going to be three. Okay, that explains that. So I've got a couple of options here, right? Next thing I'm probably going to do is send this off to my guys that are a little more technical and let them know that I've got this problem. Now, I want to show them the session instead of trying to explain it to them. So let's do this, right? You can see I've got a nice example here of our session. I'm going to copy that text. All right, there we go. I'm going to Control C, copy that guy. In fact, I can do it here. And then I'm going to be able to forward that information off to my guys. Right? So once they get in here and look at this, they're probably going to look at a little bit different data, right? There's some more data behind the scenes. Just as an example here, let's pop over and take a peek at one of those. You can see the kind of information that's actually captured here. You can see an example there of, uh, of the Aurora store, right? The actual HTML that's behind the scenes there. And you can look in this data for patterns, right? They might find some information, explain, maybe there's some... Uh, Air messaging behind the scenes, that's not uncommon today. And there's also a, a record of the request here. Let me see, pop over here the request. You can look at that guy too. And you can see an example of our request here, right? See the information that went across the wire. Okay, so uh, this uh, segues into a discussion you're probably gonna have with a customer about what the next steps are. Um, good time to remind you guys that Discover is gonna work a little bit differently than some of the products we compete with. There isn't a, an end result. Like, for example, if you have a web analytics tool, your end result is the analytics. Okay, you've got some reporting. That's what you have. Discover is always going to be iterative, right? You're going to always find something, and then that's going to lead you to look into something else over time. So there's some clear next steps here. I'm going to go ahead and get my guys involved, so I think I know what the problem is. The next step is probably to pop in and build some eventing around this specific error. And we can pop down and look at that guy again. Uh, and for example, I want to know how often it happens, right? Precisely how often it happens. This particular error, not just the fact that people hit this page three times, which is useful and helped me ferret this guy out, right? That more general um, reporting helped me find this guy. Now I want some specific reporting about this guy. I also want to know what it does to the bottom line, right? And I can determine that. I can say, what percentage of customers that experience this error still check out? And I'm going to find out that it's probably either very low or none. Like maybe it's 5% or 2%. Or it could even be zero. And then I'm going to collect the information right here and monetize things. And by the end of the day here, I'll have some information about what this guy's really doing to our bottom line. Okay, that's probably the next steps, right? We've kind of reached the end of the demo here, guys. Just as a review, we walk through about how you deploy Discover uh, from Sophie, right? Really pretty straightforward. There's a couple of clicks, takes a little time, it's like roughly an hour, thereabouts. We then walk through a use case example for a non-technical uh, e-commerce manager might look at, right? They pop in the dashboards, uh, quickly identify there's a problem by a very general eventing, right? By They're looking for a general behavior, folks hitting that payment page multiple times. And we were able to pop in and look at that guy and see what the specific issue actually was, right? Find our problematic sessions. And then we looked at the replays themselves uh, and we're able to determine the exact example. We even looked at a few of them to help build our case, right? That's anecdotal data. So that's the extent of our uh, demo for Demo Pack 1 today. So thanks everybody for turning, tuning in, excuse me. Um, and thanks for joining us. Bye, guys.